Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. you call this keeping the peace? Sitting around in the sun like a farmer on Sunday? <laughs> Hello, Doc. Oh, I wish I was a U.S. Marshal. Get paid whether you're working or not. What's the matter, Doc? Lose a couple of patients last night? Uh, I'm thinking of moving to San Francisco, Matt. What for? You got a monopoly here in Dodge. San Francisco's full of doctors. Yes, and they're probably all rich, too. No, no, I'm serious, Matt. Well, forget it, Doc. You're some 20 years too late for the gold rush. And anyway, we need you here. Dodge can find another doctor. I'm tired of working day and night and getting paid with promises. Well, you need some money, I'll call a town meeting and shake it out of these people, Doc. But if you try to go to San Francisco, I'll throw you in jail and you can practice from there. Oh, well, good. Then you'll have to feed me, too. <laughs> <laughs> gladly, Doc, gladly. If you can stand Chester's cooking. Yeah, oh, 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 I take it all back, man. The last time I ate one of Chester's meals, I was groggy for three days. <laughs> oh, oh, Chester. Uh, hello, Doc. Mr. Dillon. Doc wants to know where you learned to cook, Chester. Why, well, my Uncle Arthur taught me, Doc. I batched with him for a time when I was a boy. Poor old fella. He died soon after that. I bet he did. Mm. That stage is kind of late today, ain't it? Well, the way Hank's driving it, it shouldn't be, but I haven't got time to loaf around greeting stagecoaches. I'll see you men later. Go oh, say so long, Doc. He's emotional at us, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, there's something wrong, Chester. Wait there, Marshal. I'll get right down. We run into a fight, Marshal. Anybody hurt, Hank? I killed a man I had riding shotgun. Huh? He fell off and I had to leave him there. Well, I'll send somebody out for him. Where did it happen? Right where the trail crosses the South Fork of the Pawnee. There were three of them bandits, Marshal. But by heaven, we put slugs into two of them. You mean you killed two of them? No, they rode off, but I could see two of them was all hunkered up over their saddles like they was hurting pretty bad. Did you recognize any of them? Well, I'd hate to be wrong and get a man into trouble, Marshal, but I'd swear one of them was that young Howard Brandt. You know the fellow that moved out here with his wife a while back? Yeah, I met him. They got a place up near Turkey Creek, Mr. Dillon, but I ain't never seen it. Now, let's ride up and see how they're making out, Chester. All right, sir. I'll go get our horses. I met Howard Brandt when he first come out here, Mr. Dillon. He sure didn't seem like no bandit to me, real gentle, easy-going fella. That's like a horse that won't buck when you first get on him, Chester. He's waiting to come loose when you least expect it. Yes, sir. Hey, there's Miss Brandt now. She must have seen us coming. Yeah. All right, oh. Hello, Miss Brandt. Howard ain't here. It's uh, important, ma'am. We'll just wait on the porch here. We won't bother you. It's no use, Marshal. Howard won't be back till tomorrow. Look down there, Chester, on the steps. What? Hey, that's blood, Mr. Dillon. Miss Brandt. That's chicken blood. I just killed one. I'm sorry, Miss Brandt, but I'm going to have to talk to Howard. Is he bad hurt? He's dying, Marshal. Leave him alone. You want to show me where he is? Marshal, leave him die in peace. He ain't got long. You'll kill him asking him questions. 
I don't figure he'll live through the night as it is. Howard and his friends held up the stage, Miss Brant, and they killed a man. Wait, Marshal. Huh? I'll tell you. All right. Jed Butler planned it all. I never heard of no Jed Butler, Mr. Dillon. Does this Butler live around here, Miss Brent? Howard knew him in Oklahoma Territory, Marshal. He and a man named Blake come by here one night a few weeks back. They didn't come into the house, so I can't tell you what they look like. But they talked Howard into holding up the stage, is that it? I didn't know nothing about it, Marshal, till today. I was inside reading up the house, and I heard a shout. And I come out, and I found Howard laying in the dirt. He just dumped him there and rolled off. You think they forced Howard to go along? No. He probably wanted to go. He disappointed me, Marshal. I thought Howard was an honest man. Maybe it's as well he's dying. I'm going into him now, Marshal. You, uh, want me to send Doc out? No. It wouldn't do no good. Well, if there's anything I can do for you, Miss Brent, you let me know. Thanks, Marshal. But I reckon it's too late now. Chester, hmm? take this down to Mr. Hightower and have him print up some wanted notices from it, huh? Yes, sir. I guess that's about all I can do about Jed Butler and his friend right now. Oh, somebody will spot him and come tell you sooner or later. And yeah, I hope so. It's already been two days. Matt? Hello, Chester. Oh, hello, Miss Kitty. Oh, what's the trouble, Kitty? I just went up to Doc's office to get some stuff for my throat. He isn't there. Well, should he be? Was he expecting you? He wasn't there this morning either. When did you see him last, Matt? I come to think of it, not since the day of the stage holdup. Why? I was with him that night, Matt. He came into the Texas Trail real late. Yeah? We were sitting there talking, and some kid brought him a message. Doc didn't say it was from, but he left. And as far as I can find out, nobody's seen him since. Hey, by golly, Mr. Dillon, she's right. I ain't seen Doc neither. That was two days ago, Matt. Well, sometimes Doc's out on a call longer than that. Are you trying to fool yourself, Matt? Yeah. Yeah, I guess I am. I heard about two of those bandits being shot. Well, it sure couldn't have been Miss Brandt who come for Doc. No. You mean one of those men was Howard Brandt? Oh, they left him at his house. Key. I didn't see him, but I believe Miss Brandt. And, well, he probably died last night. Oh, I feel sorrier for her than him. I guess I do too, Kitty. But what about Doc, Matt? What are you going to do? Well, Kitty, if I knew where those men are, I'd have gone after him before now. They're holding him. They might even kill him. Look, Kitty, I can't go out and ride around on the prairie hoping to bump into him somewhere. If anything happens to Doc, I'll go after those men myself, Matt. Well, maybe they'll just turn him loose when he's through doctoring the men. I wish I could believe that. Yeah. Yeah, so do I. waited the rest of that day and through the night, but nothing happened. The next morning, however, I was walking down to the office when I saw Ms. Brandt drive by in a wagon. I waved, but she went on past me without a sign. And as she did, I noticed a figure lying in the back of the wagon wrapped in a blanket. And as I watched her drive down the street and on out of town, I realized she must be headed for Boot Hill. I got Chester, and we followed her out to the burying ground. She had stopped and was taking a shovel out of the wagon when we walked up to her. I don't need no help, Marshal. The ground's hard, Miss Brandt. We'll dig a hole for you. Leave me be. He's my man, and I'll bury him myself. Right where he deserves. Among the rest of these murderers and outlaws. What are you looking at, Marshal? Your face? What happened to you? Shows, does it? Yeah. 
Jed Butler did that, Marshal. He came by yesterday. Knocked me around some. He did? What for? Where is he? I was going to come tell you. Once I got Howard buried. Well, tell me now. He's got Doc with him. At least I think he has. Doc was there all tied up sitting on a horse. He didn't say nothing. Butler said he'd shoot him if he did. Why'd he beat you? What'd he want? He wanted to know if you'd been around. And if we'd told you anything. Howard was still alive, Marshal. I don't know how he lived so long. But he died after Butler got to shaking him and slapping him. What did you tell him? Nothing. That's why he beat me. Well, at least we know for sure he's got Doc with him, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, but we're no closer to finding him. You sure you won't let us help Barry Howard, ma'am? I kind of wish you would now, Marshal. I'm just about wore out. I just can't stand this waiting around doing nothing much longer. Couldn't you organize a posse or something? Butler would get scared if he got wind of a posse, Chester. You mean he'd shoot Doc and try to get away? Yeah, he might. It's a safer bet just to wait it up. Well, Tobiel, but come on in. How are you, Tobiel? Tobiel always good, Chester. Uh, Where you been the last month, anyway? Out scalping white men? Tobiel no scalp white men long time. Maybe too long. Well, for a tame Indian, you sure got a wild look in your eye. What you doing here? Tobiel hunt antelope on prairie. Huh? Way off, see, two white men. One ride very funny. Tobiel go very close. They no see, but Tobiel see. What did you see, Tobiel? White medicine man. A doc? Uh, good man. Take bullet out of Tobiel long time ago. No like him all tied in rope. Come quick, tell Marshal. Do you know where they are? Can you track them? White man easy to track, like buffalo herd. Always big fool. When was this, Tobiel? Yesterday. Long ride from here. All right. Chester, go get our horses and find a fresh one for Tobiel. Maybe. Maybe we won't be too late. Return for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first, a man just out of prison emerges to freedom packed with panic. Monday night on CBS Radio, Suspense stars Broderick Crawford in Parole to Panic, a spine tingling production well calculated to keep you in suspense. It's entirely possible under certain circumstances that prison might be preferable to freedom. Hear Suspense Monday night on most of these stations, and you'll agree fully with that premise. Now the second act of Gunsmoke. It was 60 miles to where Tobiel had seen Doc and Jed Butler, but we rode hard and covered it in a very few hours. From there on, however, with Tobiel tracking, we had to slow down. And it was growing dusk when the trail finally led to the edge of a small bluff and then turned and dropped down around the side of it. We dismounted and followed it the rest of the way on foot to where we could see a small cabin hidden in a clump of box elder at the base of the cliff. And there we waited for the dark. When it came, we sneaked up to the cabin and stood close to the wall, listening. How's he now, Doc? I've told you before, Butler, the man's dying. Listen, you, he's the only man I ever called friend. He better not die. I'm a doctor, Butler. I'd do anything in my power to save a life, even that of a murderer. You go on talking like that, I'll blow you open with his shotgun, Doc. Shotgun, shot. Why don't you carry a pistol, like ordinary men? Or are you too much of a coward? Doc, 
You're either a fool or you're a plum crazy. Oh, why? Because I'm not afraid to die? Well, you're going to die just as soon as he does. I ain't going to leave you around to spread no tales. I'm going to kill you and get out of here. And it won't be very long, Butler. Blake will go most any minute. Maybe I ought to shoot you now. Just leave him here. Well, I thought you said that uh, he was your friend. He is. But I'm getting a spooky feeling. Chester, Tobio, let's get talk back. out of you, Doc, and I won't wait. You're going to kill him, Mr. Gillen. Do something. He better bust in there before it's too late. No, no. He killed Doc Sure, we do that. Yeah, Tobil's right, Chester. But we gotta do something. Doc said himself that wounded man's gonna die any minute. Hell, I'm thinking, Chester. If plenty time could wait and shoot when come out in morning. Yeah, but we got no time. There might be a chink somewhere in that cabin that I could poke a gun through. Man say him very spooky now. One little noise, shoot Doc fast. Yeah, I know. I wouldn't dare take the chance. Tobiel no many trick, all kind. But here, nothing. If Butler used a pistol, Doc might have a bare chance, but that cussed shotgun... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What, Mr. Gunn? That shotgun. It's not a six-shooter, and it's not a repeating rifle. What do you mean? He can shoot it once, and then he's got to reload. Well, once is all it takes. To kill one man, it is, Chester. <laughs> what are you doing, Mr. Gunn? Here. Take my gun belt, Chester. What? Here, take it. Yes, sir, but what for? I'm going in there. Unarmed. What? Now, when I get inside, you and Fabi will sneak up close. And you'll be ready to come through that door when you hear his shotgun go off. Mr. Dillon, you can't do that. Yes, I can. He'll kill you, sure. Maybe. But if you two don't get in there fast, if he does shoot, he'll club Doc to death. All right, now, quiet. Who's that? Get over by the door, Doc. Oh, don't. Don't open it yet. Doc Adams is standing by that door. I got a shotgun aimed at his back. Now, who is it? I'm unarmed. Open the door. I'll come in with my hands in front of me. All right. Open it, Doc. Any tricks? I'll shoot Doc. Go ahead, Doc. Hello, Doc. Uh, Matt? Uh, he's unarmed, Butler. And get in here and close that door. Who are you? Matt Dillon. Dillon? Marshal? That's right. You got some men outside, huh? Well, it won't do no good, Marshal. I'll shoot you before they can get anywhere near me. I got two men out there, Butler. And the second they hear a shot, they'll be in here. That'll be too late. Or Marshal? Well, it depends on how you look at it, Butler. It won't be too late to take you. That shotgun only shoots once. <laughs> Take me? You'll be dead. Yeah. Uh, Matt. Matt, you shouldn't have done this. Why not, Doc? Well, it's bad enough. Me getting killed. He can only kill one of us, Doc. If he shoots me, Tobiel and Chester will get him. And if he shoots you, I'll kill him with my bare hands. You got it all figured, ain't you, Marshal? Yeah. Well, I'd rather kill a U.S. Marshal than a doctor any day. You know that? Matt, Matt, he's right. You, you should have stayed outside. And stand there waiting for him to shoot you? No, I... I wouldn't like that much, Doc. Well, maybe, maybe you'll shoot me anyway. Maybe. But at least there's some kind of a chance now. Shut up, minute you two. Shut up. I don't quite figure this. No? No. 
Uh, you mean uh, you come in here knowing I'll probably kill you rather than Doc? Is that right? Yes, Butler, that's right. Yes, that, that's what he did. Why? For no reason, Butler. No, no reason at all, except we're we're friends, I guess. Just something like that. What's being friends got to do with it? You wouldn't understand, Butler. You, you no good, filthy, rotten scum. He, he's willing to die for you, ain't he? I never heard of nothing like that. And him, Marshal, and everything. Willing to die? That's your friend, Butler. I better take a look at him. He's dead now. Well, make up your mind, Butler. I just don't understand a man like that. Greater love hath no man than this. That a man lay down his life for his friends. What's that? You ain't saying that. That come from something. Scripture, huh? Is that what it is? Blake's the only friend I ever had. Oh, and a while ago you were willing to leave him here to die. Alone. You don't know anything about friendship, Butler. No, I guess I don't. Anyways, if I was in a spot like you, there ain't nobody... Nobody in the world would have walked in here to do for me what the marshal's willing to do for you. And I feel sorry for you, Butler. Real sorry. If it'll still give you pleasure to shoot, well, go ahead. No. I just get killed anyway. All right, give me the gun, Butler. Sure. I never knowed people like you in the dock before, Marshal. You sure you ain't crazy or something? Maybe. Maybe we are a little butler. Who knows? Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Joyce McCluskey, John Daner, Frank Gerstel, and Ralph Moody. Harley Bear as Chester, Howard McNear as Doc, and Georgia Ellis as Kitty. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal... Fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in gun smoke. Tomorrow afternoon, for its 11th feature report to America, the CBS Radio Department of Public Affairs tells the story of the wetbacks, the thousands of illegal immigrants who cross our southern border through America's big back door to look for work and wages. Hear Wetbacks, Sunday afternoon on most of these same stations. George Walsh speaking. John Lund, as yours truly, Johnny Dollar, brings you colorful mystery Tuesday nights on the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>